I never thought I'd tell a story about weaning myself off of psychiatric medications using neurofeedback, but here we are. I guess as we've all learned in the last couple of years is things are unpredictable in life, right? Um, what happened is that in October 2020, my best friend, my best friend drowned. Uh, he died in a drowning accident. And um, I... We, my wife and I heard about it on uh, the way back from a camping trip and we, uh, I was driving and I was just in complete shock. And this is in the middle of the pandemic, so uh, no funeral, no you know, being able to go there and uh, support his parents who I'd become very close with over the last couple of years. He was my best friend for those couple of years while I was in Chicago. I knew him from medical school and he was the funniest, most uh, goofy, great person to be around. And uh, we would spend a lot of time up by his lake house in Wisconsin. He, he liked to go snorkeling at night. Uh, he was kind of a wild guy like that. But uh, one of the things that, you know, looking back on is that his substance use had increased, that he was drinking and snorkeling at night. And although it sounded like a fun adventure, obviously it was a very dangerous thing to do. And he was out there with his girlfriend who was up on a bridge uh, watching him, saw the light go out. And basically by the time she had was able to call the emergency services and the paramedics, by the time they got him out of the water, because as you can imagine, it's pretty murky down there in a Wisconsin lake, uh, he was gone. And I cried for a couple of days and I, at the time it felt appropriate to just move forward and focus on my business. I had a wedding coming up. I was getting out of the military and ready to transition into doing this YouTube thing full time, looking at neurofeedback and brain computer interface. And I felt very motivated and focused for about six months. So he passed away in October 2020, and by the time April 2021 came around and I was looking at transitioning out of the military in July 2021, uh, my body had basically reached a breaking point. I uh, would wake up with severe anxiety. I've never experienced anxiety like that before where the fight or flight response would kick in seconds after opening my eyes. My whole body would break out into a sweat. Um, all the worst thoughts of uh, failure, guilt, uh, anything else that you can think of would enter my mind and felt like I was going to fail at the transition of getting out of the military. I'm, I'm really thankful for everything that the military taught me, but um, and I had seen this in patients of mine that were transitioning out of the military. There's definitely an institutionalization part of the, of the military. You have your health care taken care of. You know where your paycheck is coming from. They tell you where to be and at what time. That is all very scheduled out for you. And on top of that, I think it combined with the stress of the pandemic, losing my best friend and transitioning out of the military where I was just in fight or flight mode all the time and I couldn't get out of it. Uh, I had read and learned so much about the default mode network where you switch into that self-referential thought where you worry and have doubts. And never before had I experienced a level of just being stuck in the default mode network, not being able to get out of my head, always worrying. Um, honestly, the times where I was seeing patients was a relief because I could switch out of that into being in the present moment and more of a task positive network and get some relief, get some peace from the intrusive thoughts that were tormenting me by the time I was able to get out of the military. So I took some of the mental health profession's own advice, my own advice, and sought out help. And a colleague of mine suggested that I should go on an SSRI, a serotonin reuptake inhibitor, get more serotonin in my system. So I ended up going on Lexapro. And over the course of a couple of weeks, it actually really helped. It put a cap on going into panic mode. It, it taught me what those medications can do when you sort of lose control of your autonomic nervous system in terms of anxiety and, and how that affects mood and can help you 
can help you put out the fire so you can figure out what it is you need to do in your life to get to a better spot where you're not feeling that way. And eventually you can wean off the medication, which was always my goal. So I got out of the military. We moved from Chicago to Las Vegas and I stayed on the medication. My original plan was to be on it for about six months. Um, I ended up being on it for close to a year. In that time, I did get counseling. Uh, it became apparent that I had deep down uh, likely subconscious guilt about the death of my friend. Um, I think it's pretty common when something like that happens, especially when it's related to substance abuse, that people feel like they could have done more and prevented what had happened. Uh, so it took working with a counselor to explore that issue and it helped quite a bit. It helped me gain understanding of what had happened and how I could move forward. And actually one of the things that helped me a lot was this book, Letting Go by David Hawkins, where he talks about revisiting some of those memories and allowing that psychological buildup to be released. Um, when it comes to losing someone close and trauma, I learned that there's an amount of energy that gets welled up inside, and if you don't release it by allowing yourself to grieve, it can uh, really mess with your mental health and even progress to the point of affecting your physical body. And uh, all the stress of the pandemic and getting out of the military and losing my friend had built up to uh, a point where it's almost like boiling water where you get the kettle pot and it's lighting off steam. You need to let off that steam and getting counseling and therapy and uh, using the techniques that David Hawkins described in this book really helped. All throughout that time, I was using neurofeedback and doing meditation, which helped a lot. It helped ground me. It helped me uh, from just kind of completely losing my center, but it was very difficult to do with that amount of energy that was inside of my body. But letting off the steam helped me gain better control. So eventually I was feeling much better and ready to get off the medication. But as I started to wean down the dose, I started to experience uh, withdrawal side effects, which are quite common with SSRIs. I started feeling dizzy, like I wasn't there. There's a term for that, depersonalization, almost like things were a dream. Uh, my balance didn't feel right. There's some definite effects that happen when you're getting off an SSRI. I'm thankful for the cap that it put on my panic and anxiety when I was getting out of the military, but now uh, it had served its purpose and I was ready to move on. I started to double down on my neurofeedback training and I had been doing a lot of work with Mendy and seeing the benefits that came with increasing the blood flow to your frontal lobe. So I started doing Mendy training every morning and that is one thing that has uh, come out of all this is I've become even more rigorous in my neurofeedback training. I don't feel like I've accomplished the things that I want to accomplish during the day unless I've done a neurofeedback training session. And what I noticed is I started gaining more control over my thoughts. It's like that frontal lobe control, that strength allows you to redirect your thoughts better. And since I had let off a lot of that uh, trauma energy, I was able to control where I was placing my mind better. It is part of I, I do think that if I had done more meditation and neurofeedback training, that it would have even better prepared me for what I went through. But uh, like I said, life is unpredictable and you know you have to learn from things that you go through. And that's really what I see neurofeedback training doing for people. I mean, imagine if you're hiking and God forbid your loved one fell over a cliff and you were holding them with one arm, you know, is your muscular strength strong enough to pull them back over that ledge or are you not strong enough and let go and have them fall to their death? Something as unbelievable as that might sound, but I start thinking about neurofeedback is you're building those connections in your mind to be able to focus, to be able to redirect your thoughts when things get really difficult and strengthen your mind because tough times are going to come. This is certainly not going to be the last, I think, tough time that I've gone through. And I know a lot of people out there are going through tough times themselves with the, uh, with the pandemic and economic instability happening in the country. And, um, I think strengthening your mind is one of the most impactful things that you can do for you and your family to, to have that strength to uh, perform at your best and be strong when things get tough.
so doing the Mendy neurofeedback training really actually helped me get off the medication. I'm off the medication now. I've been feeling really well for the most part. I've even noticed on my runs, my long distance runs, I run about six miles a couple of times a week. And, um, I just finished David Goggins book, which was excellent by the way. And he talks about getting in this zone when you're doing long distance training. And I've been able to get into that more. And I think it has to do more with increased focus while I'm running and not getting distracted and allowing that to have like a meditative experience to focus in on singular thought and be very present to the moment so that you can do tough things like run long distance. I had experienced a lot of the practical benefits of neurofeedback before where I was using the Muse headband, had longer meditation sessions, and as a result had some pretty deep meditation sessions because it taught me to focus my mind on a singular object and other positive benefits that I've had from neurofeedback. But this is the first time that I've really used neurofeedback to assist me to do something that is very difficult to do and very important to do at the same time. It's pretty exciting. Now I'm doing YouTube full time. My wife just left her job in corporate and I'm so proud that we're able to do that. She can come and uh, help assist what I'm doing here on YouTube and have more time flexibility to care for our baby on the way. And I'm here now because of the mental strength to get through a very difficult time of transition for me. So that really inspires me to teach people how to use these devices to strengthen their own minds and to give you more information here on YouTube so that you yourself can develop a neurofeedback routine to add to your meditation, to add your exercise, to add to the good diet, to add to mental health care if you need it. These are all tools in our toolbox to strengthen our minds and be the most powerful version of ourselves that we can be. And Neurofeedback is not going to singularly get you there, but it can definitely be a powerful tool in your toolbox to get there. So uh, I've been asked on YouTube, what are the practical benefits of neurofeedback? This is something that has happened to me within the last year and a half. So I'm sharing it here on YouTube and I really appreciate the listen and I hope that it helps and inspires you to engage in your own training and strengthen your own mind. Thanks.